morning here at the New York Stock Exchange. Getty Images rang the opening bell. Now, I think it's a good time to highlight what's going on with this one. I can remember the last time the stock photo company was publicly traded before it was taken private in 2008. I always thought it was a pretty darn solid business. Everybody uses their pictures. So late last year when we learned that Getty was coming public again, this time via a SPAC merger, call me intrigued. This is one of the rare SPAC stories where the murder target is a quality business. It's actually profitable. But it turns out I was not alone in liking this one because just days after Getty merged with the SPAC acquirer back in July, the stock exploded higher. That includes a monstrous 149% gain in a single day, July 29th. Imagine catching that 149% gain. Then it was followed by a 19% gain the next trading day. While it spent the next couple of weeks trading sideways, well, it tacked on another 10% today after they rang the opening bell. Now, it's certainly a stark contrast to other recent SPAC stories, isn't it? The ones that have tended to see their stocks fall apart once the deals are consummated. Instead, Getty Images caught fire. So what the heck is going on here? And what do we do with this ultra-rare, red-hot SPAC stock? Okay, first, let me just say that I, I, I like the company, even as the stock has gotten overheated. You know Getty Images as the leading global supplier of visual content. Sometimes it seems like every photo you see on the Internet was licensed from these guys. Getty Images, Getty Photo. Now, they got a massive library of content with their pictures being viewed. Get this. This is an amazing stat. More than a billion times per day. They've also got tons of video content and an army of contributors getting new stuff. These days, every business needs an online presence. If you want it, want it, you, well, you gotta, if you want it to look good like the other guys, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to need to pay Getty. Now, this one's got a long history. Originally, Getty was one of the few, was really one of the first internet places, you could call it that, uh, coming public for the first time back in 1996. But unlike the other dot-coms, this thing continued to roar in the 2000s. They ended up being taken private for $2.4 billion in 2008, thanks to increased competition, also the financial crisis. But if that deal had happened a couple of years earlier, I think the price might have been closer to, say, $5 billion. Since then, this thing has been traded between private equity firms. Carlisle bought it in 2012. Then in 2018, the Getty family decided to buy Carlisle's whole stake, take uh, back control of the company. That's when co-founder Mark Getty took over as chairman, bringing in a fellow by the name of Craig Peters as CEO. Fast forward to last December, we learned Getty Images would be returning to the public markets by merging with a SPAC, C.C. Newberger Principal Holdings II. I know, a mouthful. In a deal that valued the company at $4.8 billion. Hey, look, for the next several months, the SPAC stock pretty much traded sideways, which is the, the new normal for these things. In fact, you expect these SPAC names to collapse once the deal closes, as SPAC investors can redeem their shares for their original 10 buck investment rather than taking shares in the new entity. But Getty exploded higher after its deal closed on July 22nd, rising from just under 10 bucks in the first couple of days after the close to north of $30 today. So how in the world do we explain this move? Okay, the stock exploded higher on July 29th, then spent the next couple of days roaring. Why? It all has to do with an SEC filing released after the close on July 28th. This was an 8K that included the results from the SPAC redemption process. Turns out nearly all of the SPAC investors elected to redeem their shares for $10.03 in cash, rather than taking shares in the new Getty Images. We're talking about 99.4% of the SPAC shareholder base. Normally, when you see a ton of these redemptions, it's bad news for the stock price because it means the new company doesn't get to raise as much money as they wanted. Getty still raised $360 million from a private investment and public equity offering on the side, and they sold some warrants for $500 million. But the SPAC was sitting on $830 million, and they're only getting about $5 million of that. You'd think that'd be bad news, right? But here's the thing. When 70% of your SPAC investors chose to take cash rather than shares in the new company, that hurts the company. But when 99% of them choose the cash, uh, like we saw with Getty, that sets up conditions for a massive short squeeze because there's just simply not enough stock going around. When it comes to the newly minted Getty, there are roughly 319 million shares outstanding. Not bad, right? But the vast majority of those are owned by insiders like the Getty family or strategic investors like Coke Industries, that's K-O-C-H, which took a 20% stake in this one, or SPAC sponsors who are restricted from selling for the moment. In fact, on July 28th, when we got this news, there's a good chance that the private investors who shelled out $360 million for the pipe deal hadn't even gotten their shares yet. It's P-I-P-E. 
That means the only shares out there were the SPAC shares. And by that point, there were only, here's the key, a half million of those left to trade. Half million. So some savvy investors saw what was going on and decided to engineer a squeeze. On July 29th, 13 million shares traded, which is a huge volume for a stock that only had a half million shares available. No wonder it jumped from $10 to $26 in a single day. And look, after taking a breather for the better part of two weeks, the squeeze is still going on. And that's how Getty rallied another 10% today. There just aren't enough sellers out there because the SPAC investors decided to take their money and run. I bet they're kicking themselves now. Look at this. Unfortunately, this ridiculous rally has made it tough to recommend getting here. The darn thing was valued at $4.8 billion in the SPAC merger late last year, so it's difficult to justify the stock up here with a $10.8 billion market capitalization. I expect the stock to come in as the remaining investors start to ring the register. Honestly, I think it's a shame the way this thing played out, because without the noise from this weird squeeze, I'd be pounding the table on getting. Unlike most SPAC stocks, it's a real business with real earnings. Three weeks ago, it had a reasonable valuation, but up here, I think the price is... Insane. Last week, Getty reported his first quarter since returning to the public markets, so the numbers were very solid, even as the guidance was somewhat mixed. However, the one analyst who covers the stock, only one, was not thrilled because he had to downgrade the stock after it had already roared. And that's my feeling, too. I think it's just prudence. Here's the bottom line. As much as I like Getty Images, the business, and I do, you have to stay away from any post-SPAC stock that explodes higher right after its merger. They, the history of these things is real ugly as they come back to earth. Getty stock has been artificially bid up in a short squeeze because there's not enough supply. So stay away until it cools off. No offense to a great company, but if this had been an IPO, I think it'd been valued at a lower price. And while we couldn't tell exactly what it would be, it's definitely a lot lower than here. Mad Money's back into the break. Coming up. Apple, Microsoft, Tesla. The charts may tell the tale of these three mega names, and Kramer has the story. Next. 